Inside Mississippi Juco Football is brought to you by HeritageProperties.com. More information on one, two, and three bedroom apartments can be found at HeritageProperties.com. By the MACJC, the toughest league in America. C Spire, Farm Bureau Insurance, Mississippi Sports Medicine, EnviroTurf Services, Bank Plus, Mississippi Blood Services, Yesco Custom Signs and Lighting, and Mississippi Sports Hall of Fame and Museum. Welcome to another edition of Inside Mississippi Juco Football brought to you by HeritageProperties.com. I'm Aslan Hodges. We come to you tonight from inside the Mississippi Sports Hall of Fame and Museum, showcasing Mississippi Junior and Community College's athletic superiority, academic prowess, and the league's strong economic impact to the state of Mississippi. Hanging hey, the game action last week, there were three teams from the MACJC nationally ranked. East Mississippi was ranked number two, Mississippi Gulf Coast ranked number nine, and the Co Lynn Wolves ranked number 10. Now, last weekend was the MACJC State Championship game, pitting number two East Mississippi down against number 10 Colin. Both of these teams have won state championships in the past two years. Colin won it in 2012, and East Mississippi won it last season en route to a 2013 NJCAA National Championship. Let's get to those game highlights with Mike Frazier. Stone Stadium, we go on the campus of Colin Community College. In Weston, there's Daniel Fitzwater warming up for the Colin Wolfpack. Glenn Davis, the Colin Wolfpack head coach, has his ball called ready to take on the number two team in the country in East Mississippi. Colin, number 10 in the nation coming into this one. Lions donning the white and red Colin in the silver and blue. And it would be the visitors getting it started. Here's Chad Kelly to Todd Mays, 16 yards and a touchdown. And it's seven nothing in favor of East Mississippi Community College. Boy, special teams have played a role the last couple of years for the Wolfpack, and here's one reason why. Daquan Davis, look at him straight ahead. He would take this for 43 yards and set up the Wolfpack in good shape on their first drive. Lions could play defense too. Fitzwater pressured, throws over the middle. Demetrius Kane with the pick. He'd have two on the day to give him six on the season. And the Lions set up in great shape, and Chad Kelly get right back to work. Little screen here, DJ Law with the catch. He'll take this one. Shoved out of bounds inside the one. Law trying to sell it, but the officials mark him out of bounds right around the one-yard line. That would set up Todd Mays, who recently committed to Oklahoma State. He gets into the end zone, and it's 14-0 in favor of the visitors. Here's Donald Gray, the Mississippi State commit. And look at the speed. Returns this one 39 yards for the Wolfpack. More defense. Watch this, gonna be tipped once, tipped twice, and right into the hands of Alan Senamore. He picks it off and has a seam, and the Lions defense sets up the offense once again. Kelly gonna go right to work. Look at this, Desmond Goss with the catch, and the touchdown from 30 yards out, 21-0. Lions lead it still first quarter. More Lions defense. Another interception, four turnovers on the game by the Wolfpack as Alan Senamore again with his second pick of the game. Here's more defense. Look at Dante Sawyer with the strip. Ball is fumbled and it is picked up and taken down the sideline for the score. And it's 28-0 in favor of East Mississippi. Fitzwater here out to the far flat on that pass completion as the Wolfpack pick up a first down. Look at Fitzwater, gonna roll right. They like to set up that screen. Nobody there, he comes back the other way and finds his man, Taylor Marini, with the catch. 
and a first down. That would lead to Greg Nichols drilling a 40-yard field goal for the Wolfpack to get them on the board. It'd be 27-3, East Mississippi leading this one. Look at this defense. Bull rush there by DJ Jones. Going up and skying high and hauling that one down, Coy McFarland. Okay, second half action now. Kelly over the middle, has his man here. 57 yards, Isaac Johnson, third on the depth chart at wide receiver for the Lions. That would set up here, the Starkville native, Preston Baker, gonna take this one to the outside for the touchdown. It'd be 33 to three, East Mississippi at the half. Second half action now, the Wolfpack gonna put together a nice drive. Daniel Fitzwater gonna look the pass, finds his man, Donald Gray, slips off the tackle and picks up a first down, 15 yards, Wolfpack on the move. And look at Fitzwater, not afraid to take off and run as he picks up another first down. That then would set up this. Fitzwater looking, looking, and got Courtney Foy along that near pylon, and it's the first touchdown of the game for the Wolfpack. But the line's just too much. Here's Isaac Johnson again, gonna take this one from 16 yards. Folks, again, he's third on the depth chart at the wide receiver slot. That's how deep this Lion team is again. Here's a slant here. Now Wyatt Roberts, the Louisville, Mississippi native in at quarterback. He hooks up with Isaac Johnson, takes it in. It's 47 to nine, East Mississippi with the lead. Wolfpack with plenty of bite left in him. Here's Fitzwater, look at this. Look at how tough is this league, look at Bates. Look at how nimble he is, and then's gonna dip the shoulder and pick up the first down right around midfield. That would set up this pass here to DeAnthony Blake, sets up a first down and goal at the five, and they'd cash in right here on the touchdown run as the Wolfpack get it into the end zone and pick up their second touchdown of the evening. But it would be all East Mississippi. Here's Wyatt Roberts again. Look at the coverage, and yet finds the receiver. Camion Patrick, 50-yard touchdown strike. The Lions would go to their victory formation, and they would win back-to-back -back state championships as they knock off the Wolfpack in this one here, 54-15. to Glenn Davis. Head coach for Colin receiving the runners up plaque. And Jim Southworth, the commissioner of the MACJC, hands the trophy to East Mississippi. Head coach Buddy Stevens and the Lions pick up the hardware for 2014. Our next C Spire Community College feature takes us to Fulton and Itawamba Community College. ICC has three campuses in Belden, Tupelo, and Fulton, each playing an absolutely vital role in preparing graduates for future success. Their nursing program alone places graduates across the state of Mississippi and the region due to the respect that their degrees carry. And we're here at the Itawamba Community College campus in Fulton, and we are now with the president, and that is Mr. Mike Eaton. And Mike, the Belden, the Tupelo, and the Fulton campus all tie in nicely and have proved to be beneficial for the districts that you serve throughout its many years. Absolutely, Mike. And by the way, welcome to Itawamba Community College. We welcome to paradise. <laughs> uh, we have three uh, beautiful campuses, the Belden uh, campus, uh, you know, that's where we have our adult basic education. That's where we have workforce training. That's where we have the GEDs. Uh, and we do a lot of things over there that serves the region. It has just been an outstanding uh, area for us and under the direction of James Williams, we can continue to have partnerships and assist people there. Um, the uh, Tupelo campus, it's what we call our commuter campus. We have about 1,800 students over there. We have our health science building that is a state-of-the-art building, $18 million. And at one time it was on this campus and those students had to drive from all the surrounding areas, the extra 18 miles to Fulton, but now with it being on the Tupelo campus, uh, they don't have as far to go, and it's made it more convenient. Plus, you know, North Mississippi Medical Center's right there mm -hmm. for all of our clinicals, so that's worked extremely well. And then you have the home campus, um, in which this is what we call our little liberal arts campus. We have the, uh, thou we house a thousand students here. We have the band, the fine arts, the athletics, 
uh, and all the college experience that, uh, that those particular students are looking for. Particularly speaking on the Tupelo campus, the job placement uh, for clinical is impressive. I know they, they, you get about 200 applicants every year but only can accept 14 of them. Your job placement is really strong. Well, it's it's really competitive. Uh, overall, you have about, uh, like in the nursing program, about 500 trying to get in for 175 slots. Mm. And then even some of the other uh, programs, uh, physical therapy assistance, occupational therapy, is very competitive. I mean, sometimes there's 20 applications for one slot there. Uh, and so, and I, and I think historically that's pretty well true all over the state. There's such a demand there, but you you have to do well uh, in in, you, in the schoolwork uh, to to be able to get into the program. And th those are very competitive programs. Oh, they really are. Uh, and then also uh, back to uh, uh, the Belden campus again, job placement there very strong. Absolutely. You know, we will take people that uh, need uh, to develop employment skills and uh, they will take them in over there and they will test them, assess them, uh, and, and then start working with them in regards to getting them the level to be able to secure a job. Then on the Fulton campus, a lot of activity here, not only athletics, but of course uh, uh, the, the marching band and uh, plenty of activities for students uh, to uh, entertain themselves as well as go to class here. Well, we, th this is a uh, just a very pristine campus. We have a lot of things going on. It's a very safe and secure campus, uh, and uh, with the activities that you have, from you know we got 275 in the marching band. We got, uh, of course, all you, the 10 sports that we have, uh, and then you have the fine arts division, from additional uh, ensembles to the choir. That there's a lot of activities here for our students to participate in. Mike, your vision, where? Uh, under your direction and leadership, do you want to steer Itawamba Community College? Well, f you know, what I know is that I'm standing on the shoulders of the former presidents, particularly Dr. Cole, that's been here. And it is everything has been in good shape. I think what we have to continuously work towards is providing the services to our uh, area high schools, our district, and our region. And it's we're at the point now that we're offering classes anytime, any place, anywhere. It's convenient. Uh, you got to have. Uh, it's got to be affordable, uh, and you got to have good quality instruction in, in what you do. We exist to educate, and then we have the by uh, shoots or products rather from the uh, fine arts to the athletics that that uh, that complements that. So we want to be strong from the education standpoint and we want to improve our graduation rates, completion rates, as you know, the community colleges, all of us are on the radar with that. So that is one of the things that I think not only Itawamba is challenged with, but all of our community colleges. Your success here at Itawamba is well documented, but what has Itawamba Community College meant to you uh, personally and professionally over the many years that you've been here? Well, it has been a storybook journey. You know, from arriving here in 1974, I never realized or never dreamed that uh, I would be the president, uh, but uh, I have uh, accepted this role. It is a very challenging role, particularly with uh, Dr. Cole that I followed there. But, you know, this has been my life. You love it. Uh, and uh, it is such a family atmosphere with our faculty, staff, and students that there is a tremendous amount of pride in, in what we do here. And, and because of, of that, you, you know, you want to do it well. Mike, thanks for your time, continued success, and all the best. Absolutely. Thank you, Mike. And we're here at the Itawamba Community College Tupelo campus. And now we're with Harold Plunkett, Dean of Health Science. Harold, since we were here last year, this program has grown in students, it's also grown in job placement, and it's grown in equipment. That's, that's correct. You know, I think the last time you were here, we had an opportunity to, to showcase our new building here. And uh, we've now got a couple semesters under our belt, and we've had the opportunity to kind of settle into the building. And, uh, uh, you know, students and faculty still have a little extra bounce in their step. Uh, things still feel new. We're getting uh, adjusted to the equipment, uh, to having all these extra parking spaces, and uh, it's just been wonderful. Uh, you're correct in that our graduation rates continue to be high. Our placement rates also continue to be high. Uh, we're, we're close to 100% in all of the important indicators, and uh, things are just really, really going well here at the college. And the students 
hands-on training. That's correct. Uh, we have uh, six different labs that students uh, are, are able to, to practice their skills, and we have state-of-the-art of equipment, and uh, we're just delighted to, to, to uh, be able to showcase this uh, building today. And we're here with Scott Blackley here on the Belden Center of Itawamba Community College. Scott, what is the overall mission, the drive, here at the Belden Center for you and your staff? Well, the overall purpose of the ICC Belden Center is to promote a highly skilled and trained workforce for the region. And we do that by, really we developed a, a one-stop center for people who are looking for a job or maybe they're underemployed. We provide assistance for those who are unemployed and we provide training for those who want to upgrade their skill set. Scott, what are some of the types of courses that you teach here? Well, we have GED courses, adult basic education. We teach OSHA training to uh, business and in, people in business and industry. We've got safety training, leadership training, all sorts of training that, that are, and skill sets that are required in, in basic uh, advanced manufacturing. We're here at the Belden Center on the campus of Itawamba Community College with Dr. Doug Ferguson. Dr. Ferguson, what type of manufacturing programs are taught here at the Belden Center? We have five programs here at Belden, and uh, they all consist of manufacturing type curriculums. Uh, the first one is welding. Uh, we have HVAC, which is uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. We have industrial maintenance. We have electrical technology and we have the uh, Advanced Manufacturing Technician Program. Job placement for uh, positions like this, once these students leave here, is pretty high. Very high. Uh, last year in the electrical and industrial maintenance, we had nearly 100% placement rate, so that's a very high rate. And as we continue on the ICC campus, now we're with Bronson Prohaska. She joins us, the director of the Student Success Center. That's right. And uh, uh, tell us about it. Okay, thanks, Mike. Uh, I'm Bronson Prohaska. I work at Etiwamba Community College. I'm the director of Student Success. And here in the Student Success Center, we assist students with tutoring, not just tutoring in one or two subjects, but in 27 subjects. Students come to us and they can receive free tutoring. We're open extended hours. We tutor students in 27 subjects. We're also responsible for the Early Alert Referral Program. And through the Early Alert Referral Program, students are referred to us via faculty members. And uh, it might be a student, a faculty member is concerned about a student, maybe for excessive absences, maybe that student hasn't done well on a test, maybe they have some personal problems. So that faculty member can um, call us or refer the student to us and we contact that student and sit down with them and have a face-to-face -face and say, hey, how can we help you? It's not a bad thing, it's a good thing. It's a retention effort. Um, it's a way that ICC reaches out to our students to help them. Itawamba Community College is led by President Mike Eaton. Eaton stopped coaching football at Itawamba Community College in 1992. He had 111 wins and two state titles. Eaton is part of the Itawamba, Mississippi, and National Community Colleges Hall of Fames. Mike Eaton is a strong strategic leader, both academically and athletically, as ICC continues to deliver for its district. Now let's head back down to Weston, where Mike Frazier has reaction and caught up with Coach Buddy Stevens and the East Mississippi Lions as they talk about winning the state championship. Uh, the guys, the guys played well. Um, I thought they handled adversity really well tonight. I thought that um, uh, you know when there were times that it, we, it could be um, it could be stressful, uh, they handled that. So we're we're all we're we're very excited about that. This team uh, just seemed to be a business-like team. Just. You know, come to work every Thursday and play. Yeah. And get it done. And that's and that's our that's our mo. That's our mentality. We know we you know we're just trying to be one and zero at the end of each week. And if we're one and zero at the end of each week, we're going to be fine. Um, and so we, we we come to work to to, to get our things done. Uh, you know, we've got repetitions we got to get in. We've got uh, special teams and and, and our, our our things that we've got to get in. Our lifting, our running. And so um, you know we, they know that. And and sometimes it gets to be monotonous, and it's been monotonous. Uh, recently, so we're going to give them a couple of days off and, uh, and and no football or no nothing for a while, and uh, we'll see what uh, uh, see if they get some of these guys. It's been a long season; give them give them a little time to recuperate. recuperate. Have you been able to absorb the the success that you and your staff uh, have accomplished 
here over the last few years? Yeah, I mean, you get a chance to sit back and, and talk about it and think about it. But, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm ready to find out if we're going to play for a national championship. And if we're not, I'm ready to get on the road recruiting and try to do it again. I mean, that's just kind of the drive that you that you have to have. You have to you have to uh, understand that, um, you know, it, it's it's great for these young men to have this opportunity. Uh, but we've got in order for us to keep continue to have this opportunity, we got to keep working and we got to get on the road recruiting and uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll we'll be able to sign another really good class like we did last year. I mean, I know it's recruiting, but how have you been able to consistently be two and sometimes three deep? At multiple uh, money positions. Well, the kids, the kids believe in what we're in what we're telling them, you know, and, and we're and, and what we're telling them is the truth. You know, they come here, they're going to play. You know, I mean, you, you look at our wide receivers. We've lost three starters at wide receiver, and and we've we've carried on really really well, and that's because the, the guys come in, they know they're going to get their touches, they know they're going to get the ball thrown to them. Uh, the running backs, you know, when we went down, we we lost two running backs in this game. Uh, you know, we didn't lose it for the year, but 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 due to injuries, we lost them. Right there, just uh, for the rest of the game, and 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 we just keep adding on, and adding on. We'll bring a receiver in, let him play running back, and we've got guys that when we when we make up our team, we try to make sure that we've got our bases covered, and we've got people that have multiple talents. Can you talk about the guys that have signed uh, on? Guys like Danley, I know, are committed currently to OU. Um, Tom Mays, I think, recently committed to Oklahoma State. Yeah, Can you, you know, talk about some of those guys. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think uh, you know, DJ Jones is committed to Florida State, and then, uh, you know, I think um, um, uh, Chad maybe going to Virginia Tech. I don't really know. It's still very, very early. If everybody remembers, you know, uh, Bo Wallace went on the on December the fifteenth. He didn't have an offer, and then by the first of January, he had uh, seven or eight. So uh, you know we well we're just ha we're just having a big our big thing is right now we just have to uh, we got to get back to school we got to get on those grades and uh, have to take a couple of days off and then uh, start getting ready for whoever we get a chance to play. Hey, congratulations on Thank another you. state title in the toughest league in America. Thank you very much. Well, you know, this to be quite honest, this is during my career at East Mississippi, as, which is 30 years, I would have uh, never believed it would have gotten had gotten to this point. But uh, it's fantastic. It's it's uh, it's unreal feeling. Of course, all the credit goes to our board, our, our president, and um, and of course Buddy and Coach Stevens and his staff. They do a fantastic job, and second to none in my opinion. And um, you know, it all goes to them. But it's a it's a great effort, great effort for our, and it's great great. Uh, thing for our institution and we really appreciate you know appreciate the opportunity to be able to be a part of this so it's super now here's a look at stats and scores from last week's state title game on the mississippi sports medicine scoreboard across the macjc
Now, will East Mississippi be going to Biloxi or Iowa to play for a national championship? You can find that answer at JucoWeekly.org. And don't forget the Mississippi Bulls coming up on Sunday, December 7th, down in Biloxi. For more information on things like tickets and corporate partnerships, you can find that at www.MississippiBowl.com. Thank you so much for watching another edition of Inside Mississippi Juco Football brought to you by HeritageProperties.com. We'll be back for our final show of the year on December 10th. Until then, we say goodnight from inside the Mississippi Sports Hall of Fame and Museum with a look at some of the best photos from last week's MACJC State Championship game. Good night. Inside Mississippi Juco football is brought to you by HeritageProperties.com. More information on one, two, and three bedroom apartments can be found at HeritageProperties.com. By the MACJC, the toughest league in America. C Spire, Farm Bureau Insurance, Mississippi Sports Medicine, EnviroTurf Services, Bank Plus, Mississippi Blood Services, Yesco Custom Signs and Lighting, and Mississippi Sports Hall of Fame and Museum.